Here is our top 10 open world games that you must be playing today. Let's go. Well, let's kick it off with our first one, Batman Arkham. What? Arkham Knight, you mean? Oh. Doesn't even know the game he's talking about. Oh, Batman Knight? Oh, I was meant to say Arkham Knight one. Arkham Knight is a brilliant follow-up to the ever-so-popular Arkham series, but it takes its previous predecessors and expands it in so many ways. The game is dark, gritty, and has the real Batman experience from start to finish. This dark and colourful experience and the ambience makes it one of the best-looking Batman games to date. This game is set... Is it in Gotham? Yeah. Well, they're all set in Gotham, mate. Right? It's Batman. Well, the combat system is very much similar to every other Batman game that's been brought out. Hey, if it ain't fixed, don't... Ah. Stop it. Get some help. If it ain't broke, leave it alone. It is so much fun to play. A whole bunch of combos, jumping from villain to villain. We do love the slow motion takedowns and the ability to be in stealth mode while attacking, jumping around from room to room. This game is absolutely one that's to be enjoyed while playing. Our next game is probably one of my favorite games of all time, and it's Fallout 4. Probably one of the best open world games I've ever played. If you haven't played Fallout 4, then this one is a must-have. This one should be remastered on the PS5. Oh, yeah, that definitely like, Fallout should. Fallout 76, man, it, was, it wasn't as good as Fallout 4. I could spend hours upon hours just in your own base. You don't even start to do the <laughs> missions and you're already just building and all the customization in your base when it comes to, you know, electricity and getting light. you got to remember, this is a PS4 game, but yet it looks like a PS5 game. Like, it, the, it looks great yeah all your customization and your upgrades for your weapons um all that kind of stuff um you're not even talking about mods yet even like once you finish the game the campaign spent hours and hours building your base and you're kind of bored and you're like you get into mods and all the different mods you can do are pretty insane and that just kind of changed gave you more hours playing the game it was just one amazing game even though i had some bugs when it first came out it was still a great game well there that you go great. fallout 4 and the collector's edition that came out with the pit boy that was cool Mm -hmm. We enjoy that one. We've got that somewhere here. There's somewhere around. There it is. <laughs> what an image. All right, let's go to our next one. This is one of my favorite games, which um, many people would agree. It's Elder Scroll V Skyrim. Brilliant, brilliant masterpiece of a game. Um, I've never played this game. Ah, oh, he's missing out. <laughs> it's one of the most captivating starts to any game. You're about to be killed and all of a sudden a dragon comes out of nowhere and starts destroying the city and obviously you're escaping, you're trying to get away and uh, from then the adventure begins. What I, love, what I love about this game, it's open world, fully immersive. You can either go third person, fully. it is fully immersive, like the way you can just you know, get food, medicine, combine things, you've got spells, potions, you can ride horses, you can, um, you know, venture out, you can go third person, first person. Um, it is that old time, uh, I don't know, that kind of, you know, back in the 15th like century. medieval time. It's medieval style. If you haven't played Elder Scroll, um, definitely advise you to grab it. I think I played it on the Switch, which is interesting. Let's go to our next game, which we definitely highly recommend, and we agree on, is Days Gone. We love zombies, we love open world, and put them together, and you Boom. have an amazing game. The best Days game. Gone. I was actually a bit nervous about this game, thinking, is it going to be done well? And after playing it, you can play it after 20 hours still going. This is great. I'm going on my bike, riding down as a horde of zombies behind me. Get mm. out of the bike, you know <laughs> and yeah, yeah. just destroy them. There's certain times in the game where you're just you're walking and you see like a, a lot of zombies, and you're like, oh, I gotta be quiet. It's and then you do stuff. something, and then they start chasing you, and then you try to <laughs> run out the heck out of there. Um, that's yeah, fun. that's really good. It's great that you're able to freely explore the world by foot. Or even better, using your motorcycle. But you've got to be careful because you run out of fuel pretty quickly and you've got to find them at gas stations, which is usually surrounded by zombies or other people you encounter. Throughout the game, you're constantly establishing trust with settlement camps by completing bounties, selling food, and other things. At these camps, you're able to buy new weapons, supply parts for your bike that allows you to go faster and even customize its appearance. While the story is a very simple story, as uh, you think your wife, you've heard that your wife might be alive, and so all you're doing is trying to find your wife you encounter uh you know hostile people uh cannibals 
uh, you encounter zombies, people to trust, people you don't trust. All right, next game. It's another zombie game. We absolutely love this one, and it's different. It's Dying Light. It's kind of still like another zombie game to a degree, but it's actually very different. A little bit different to so, Days Gone. Days Gone is third person. This is first person. So you're not usually in a first person mode with zombies. And you don't do... This is not a typical action game. This is a high adrenaline, fast paced, parkour kind of game. Which is why I wasn't the biggest fan. Because I suck at parkour. I just couldn't put it out mm. there. It's like open world, it. zombies, and parkour all at the same time. It's pretty fun. Yeah. But what makes this game really unique is the day and night element of the game. What we love about this game is the ability to explore the land, to find loot, which helps you craft new weapons. Exploration is the key to this game. And the way it makes it interactive and dynamic is the day and night cycle. During the day, you're able to explore, set traps, save people, move from one location to another fairly safely because the infected are slow. But that can easily change when it's nighttime. Night is a different story. The infected transform to a more dangerous being full of rage and ready to kill, making a night more intense sense of gameplay. So if I remember playing this game correctly, because it's probably a little while since I played it, but when at nighttime, it's on PS5. If you're exploring the open world, and then I think it's the volatile, mm. they don't see you. They're nuts. It's kind of like this like countdown thing happens where you better get out of there or you're gonna have every zombie hunting you down then it's your you're trying to parkour to a base or somewhere <laughs> where it's safe and that's what makes this game pretty fun well it's got over a hundred weapons in this game which is really really cool and, and, and over a thousand different ways to customize those hundred weapons so it's definitely a game uh, for open world hardcore this is for those who are just adrenaline seeking gaming it's not one that you relax Pretty much, you're on the go when you play this game. So, don't play it if you want to chill. Play it if you just want to kill zombies and parkour it. Well, the next one is the, the extreme opposite of what we just said. It's the most chill game you can play. To a degree. If, if you, you want to make it. If you want to make degree, it. To a degree, It's very well open. It's very well created. Probably one of the best selling games in the world. So. I think it is. And you know what we're talking about. Mario. Joking! <laughs> Minecraft. Well, it doesn't have like a campaign, kind of like most other games of the open world, but technically it's an open world game. So. It is an open world. You can yeah, explore, yeah. there's no levels. Um, again, this is a simple, fun, but creative and challenging game. Obviously, you don't need us to talk about Minecraft. Mm. If you haven't played Minecraft, are you even a gamer? Mm. Well, Ooh. we've played this in survival mode. Um, we tried to challenge each other to see who could last 10 minutes playing survival and not get killed by... It was like one of my first times playing this game. <sighs> uh, I'll just quickly play here and you can see that I win the challenge. So, yeah, If we do a re-challenge, I'll destroy Obviously, you. Obviously, uh, Minecraft, what can you say? It's got to be on the list. It's great out for more games. So. Yeah. yeah. Let's move on to the next one. We've been waiting, I think, 20 years for a game mm. like this to come out. Okay. The quality of the like, quality of this game. Yeah, it's yeah. it's been like in the making for the last twenty years. It needed a PS5 for it to come out, and we, we are talking about what the hell is even that? Hogwarts Legacy. <sighs> it's finally it's a, a, a Harry Potter game worth buying. You know, <laughs> well technically it's not Harry Potter, but you know what I mean. Oh, that's why it's not called Harry Potter. Why? Because it's not Harry Potter. Obviously. Ah, oh. <laughs> obviously it's great to finally be a wizard and in Hogwarts. This is one of those open world games where you don't have to do anything if you don't want to. And you can still have loads of fun. Like I get lost at the castle for like hours. I'm like, yeah. I don't even know where the hell I am. Flying your broom, obviously all the things you can do in it when it comes to your battles and going, Leviosa! Wingardium Leviosa. <laughs> Whatever it is, <laughs> put a spell on me. <laughs> the different thing, the different attacks you can do. It's it's a, it's the open world. The, the, all the different little side quests and missions and all that kind of stuff. The Merlin challenges. It's a great game. Yeah, perhaps play a lot. The only thing I was very disappointed in. Spoiler alert: they don't let you play Quidditch. Ah, oh, that's true. That, it's a, I get it. They said that's at the beginning of the game, true. oh, Quidditch is bad this year, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, really? Oh, this year's Quidditch season has been cancelled. Like, really? It's like one of the coolest part about Harry Potter is Quidditch. Mm -hmm. And now that you've made a game perfect for what it is, 
you won't allow us to play Quidditch. All right, next game. All right, another open world, a little bit different to some of our other ones. This game's um, brilliant. Like Ghost of Shushima, Tushima, Tsushima. Tsushima. Ghost, Ghost of Tsushima. Tush, t what is it? Ghost of Tsushima. Tsushima. No, not Tsushima. T what is it then? Ghost of Tsushima. 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 Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? Whatever. Ghost of Tsushima. Yeah. Well, I was first introduced to this game on the PS4, and it was that good that I ended up getting it on the PS5. Yes. And not many games you do that. I've been recently replaying this game. Just so how different it is. Obviously, you're a, you're a samurai, and it's great to be a samurai in an open world because it's you know you've so been different. like you've been a bad guy, you've been a wizard already. Bad you know. guy. Oh, GTA. Oh, whatever. You know what I mean? Like. Oh, GTA yeah. is not on this list. I am. <laughs> yeah. Don't like GTA. Go on. No, I thought that about GTA. GTA should be on this list. Okay. Yeah. Maybe GTA 6 when it comes out. GTA 5 is pretty good. Okay. What PlayStation do really well is their open world, third person, story based games. Ghost of Tsushima allows you to immerse yourself in the open world of Tsushima Island, which is incredibly beautiful. You're able to engage in direct combat with your katana sword, which include a number of epic fatal strikes. This isn't just a full blown action game, but it also relies heavily on stealth and strategy in accomplishing certain missions which is really fun and it reminds me a little of Assassin's Creed. One of the unique things about this game is how it directs you to missions or places to go and as you press swipe up, whatever it is, it can't to kind of get directions. It does that and then it, <laughs> you see the window where it goes. I've been playing this recently and that, that actually is really annoying. Sometimes I just want a map. <laughs> that has where no, you're going. It's at the actually top. cool. It's like more realistic. No, it <laughs> frustrates me. I'm just I like, like it. Just like show it. me where they're going. All this uh -huh. wind. <laughs> okay, for the last two. Wait, I'm still. Like, look at this. Well, we're filming. Why are you rubbing your eyes during a film? Because I'm human. We'll rub it before we film. That's what she said. <laughs> this next game would be my number one, but it's not his number one. So it's going to be like the should there's be no, number there's one. There's no numbers there's... in this. Is this just like our favorite 10 games? Yeah, I know, but we clearly went from like the least one we like to the best nah, one. Nah, I think I like them all for different reasons. This next game is my get game of the century. We're talking about Tears of the Kingdom Zelda. Um, the number one played game right now for all Nintendo Switch uh, fans. Because it's probably the only good game on the Switch. Oh, smack! <laughs> There's a lot of... Uh -huh. If all these 10 games that we mentioned were on the We're Switch, talking about open world. Probably this yeah. game wouldn't be as good. Just, open world. Just saying. It's open world. <laughs> Nintendo are great for base-to-base -base level games and puzzles yeah, and yeah, right, side-scrolling. Right, yeah, yeah. Okay. Right, well, cool. obviously, Tears of the Kingdom is a great game. Obviously, you've got the three different kind of open worlds. You've got the sky, you've got land, and then you've got underground. So... Just to have land on its own would have been great, but then to have extra places where you can explore and visit is pretty yeah, sweet. It's awesome. I think the you can get lost in Zelda trying to go for one mission to one mission, and there's like 15 side missions in between. And, you know, unlike other games, it tells you where to go on your map. If you haven't uncovered it, you don't know whether you can climb that wall, that mountain. You have to go around. Can I take my horse? Can I do this? What's really cool is the craftability of this game using the Zona devices and enables you just to make the most wildest things out there. I don't know if you YouTube some of this stuff, what people have been creating on Zelda. I just stick to my motorbike, so... Motorbike? Well, like the... Well, it's like a hovercraft motorbike. Oh, you've been doing that? Just the two... The two circle hover... I did, a, I, did a, I did a hover bike with the horse on top. Yeah. So the horse was hovering. Hmm. So it was great. You can see, you can see from the gameplay, there's so many things that you can build, customise, and just to your own imagination. Okay. Number one, drum roll. No, this is not number one. This is just a overall game we like. Alright? Red Dead Redemption 2. Should be a... Should be um, on, on the PS5. I cannot believe they've not remastered but, Red man. Redemption. It's almost, I imagine this like GTA, but in the Western world is kind of how I, if I try to explain it. But way better than GTA. Well, GTA's got its own. Actually, GTA should be on the list, by the way. We'll have so. an honorable mentions in a minute. But, um. What did you say? Honorable mentions in a minute. 
Honorable, honorable, uh, honorable. honorable. I think you're trying to say honorable. Shut up! This game has been called the greatest video game ever made. And when you play this game, you'll understand why. Rockstar have truly made a unique masterpiece. And as quoted by them, the game is truly way ahead of its time. It is set in absolutely gorgeous, open war, jaw-dropping landscape of the United States in 1899 as you play outlaw Arthur Morgan, member of the Van der Linden gang completing missions and set objectives. But what we love most about this game is outside the story mode and this is where the real fun begins. Outside the story mode there are many side missions found in this interactive open world game. You're able to engage in combat with others using melee attacks, guns, bow and arrows while riding on your faithful steed and what's really cool is that you're also able to take control of stage coaches and trains which is way way cool. One of those random scenes you've seen this game is when you rock up to the house and uh, you're introduced to the uh, a couple who are eating oh, food and you're sitting down to eat with them right. and there's a moment in the game you. where you realize there. that they're not mm. a couple that they're mm. actually brother and sister mm. and I'm pretty sure cannibals mm. but I just like you can just see the look on you know, the main character's face mm. 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 Anyway, Red Dead is definitely on the list. Look, we have a whole bunch that we didn't, and we don't have time to get to. And I know you're going to hate me for it, but yes, Spider Man's great. <laughs> GTA 5. Or any of the GTAs, really. No, I don't like GTA. And yes, um, well, there's so many. We've there's so many mentions. Assassin's Creed. There's so, but they're our top 10. And so comment below what your thoughts are that should be on what would you be playing today. Mm. And if you had to pick one out of all the games we've mentioned, which one would you play Ooh. for the rest of your life? Zelda. Uh, being an open world, you know. So let us know. Thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time. Peace.